tonight, First Peter, how many of you got enough to eat this afternoon? Whatever that was this morning, this afternoon. Me three. I think I gained a couple pounds today. But uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to look at a couple of the uh, very last verses in 1 Peter chapter number 1. And we're going to get into 1 Peter chapter number 2. Uh, I don't plan on being a long time tonight. We'll uh, go as the Lord leads, but I'm going to start reading in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 23. We covered this uh, last Sunday night. But uh, I'd like to just review 23, 24, and 25, and then we'll get into 1 Peter chapter number 2. Alright, so it says this, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Uh, being born again is something that every single believer has experienced the moment that they put their faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. That's what we call the gospel. The Bible says that this is the word by which the gospel was preached unto us. The gospel simply means good news. When people come to our church, whether it be on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, a Wednesday night, and some other uh, meeting that we might have, chances are very, very good that they're going to hear the gospel. What it means to be born again. When someone receives Christ, they are translated from darkness to light. Um, the Bible has many ways of saying born again. It, we call it being saved, being born again, being redeemed. Chapter 1 in Rome, or in 1 uh, Peter is all about the redemption that we have in Christ. It was purchased with his blood, not purchased with corruptible things as silver and gold, but it was pur purchased with something that was incorruptible, the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, the second that someone is born again, they are made the righteousness of God. We talked about the fact that it's not according to our works uh, that we're saved, but it's by, uh, let's see, what is that? Not of works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. The glory of man, as great as that might seem, comes to naught. The Bible says that uh, the glory of man, it fades away. It's like the grass. It's like the flower. If you guys think about the glory of man, um, think about some of the things that you would be able to say man has accomplished or man that's really cool you think of the technological advances the medical advances you think about where we've come in uh the advances that man even though going on the knowledge that god has given him using the raw material that god has given him all of that as awesome as it seems is going to come to naught but the one thing that is going to last forever can only come through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Um, starting in verse number 1 of chapter number 2, Because of chapter number 1, because of the gospel, because of who we are in Christ, because it's something that's uncorruptible. Remember in chapter 1, he encouraged us to love the brethren. He says in verse number, uh, ch verse number 1, chapter 2, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, 
As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Here Peter is giving us some directions to greater growth. You see, it is very important that a person is born again, but it's also very important that we grow in our Christian walk with the Lord. And we do that by taking heed to God's word. And Peter gives us some directions. He says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, he's giving us some directions to put something aside. So if you guys would imagine with me, and I won't do it, but imagine that this shirt is something that I would uh, take off. Just kidding. Man, you're getting all excited over there. <laughs> Let's say that this is malice. This is something that Peter is saying, hey, I'm going to give you some direction. You need to take that off. You need to lay it aside. You need to cast it off of you. It's not who you are. Chapter 1, we went over who you are. You're born again. You're redeemed. Uh, you have an uh, inheritance that's incorruptible. Um, it's reserved in heaven for you. This, this is who you are. This is what it looks like. It looks like loving the brethren. This is what it doesn't look like. It, uh, you take the malice off. I, I have a lengthy uh, definition of the word malice. It's, it's this. Uh, overgrown anger retained till it inflames a man to, desi to design mischief, to do mischief, or delight in any mischief that befalls another. So, remember who we're talking to, right? Peter is writing to Christians who have been fleeing persecutions. Uh, Christians have been burned at the stake, torn apart by lions. They've been uh, persecuted to no end. And Peter says, look, here's, here you guys, this is what it looks like in chapter 1. This is what it doesn't look like. Take off that malice, that anger, the hate that you have. You're designing, how am I going to get back? How am I going to get even? Put that aside. Uh, guile. It's deceit in words. Hypocrisies. It's plural. Uh, meaning there's different kinds of hypocrisies. You know, you can uh, have someone that you think is your, fr your friend. And they could be a hypocrite. Right? You could, you could uh, act in one way to somebody out in public that you're not in private. How many of you parents, guilty right here, but how many of you parents have been accused or laughed at by your kids when you're, you're in conversation with them and then the phone rings and you're like, hello? And you're just all in a good mood and, and, and you're kind of like, you get off the phone and you're like, what? <laughs> Hypocrisies, envies, uh, grieving at the good of another whether it's their abilities, their prosperity, their fame, their successful labors. Here's an attitude, and Peter's giving us direction of something that we've got to put this off because it's not who I am. Listen, whenever there's directions for what to do, there's always directions uh, for what not to do. That could come from uh, God. It could also come from outside of God, it could come from outside of the world. The devil is always trying to get us to go down the wrong road. Trying to get us to think, it's okay. It's okay if you do this. It's okay if you do that. How many of you guys uh, have seen, lately it's kind of gone now, but how many of you from this area have seen orange spray paint on the asphalt? Yeah, if, you, if you've driven around here. Uh, you, it didn't matter what direction you came from. If you came to church... Uh, from the Sierra High School way, if you came up Aubrey Road, if you came down uh, from Aubrey Road this way, shoot, there was directions uh, all the way up at the top of Jose Basin. Big green or uh, orange spray paint. Uh, the, the directions were this, meth ahead, big arrows. I was like, man, when I came to church the first time, I was like, whoa, somebody's getting even with somebody. I don't know what, why, but I went a little bit further and it said, drug dealer, this way. 
And, and you would follow, I mean, I wasn't following these directions on purpose, it just happened to be the way I was going, all right? But you get, you get so far, and all of a sudden it said, drug dealer, big, all the way across the whole road with arrows pointing into the driveway. And on the other side, you could read it from the other way, directions saying, drug dealer, this way. And as I kept going, I saw, oh, wow, they painted these directions on the road from coming from that way and this way. And there was all kinds of directions that I don't know what the circumstances were. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I don't know why those were on the ground. But nonetheless, the world is constantly trying to give us directions saying, hey, it's going to be okay if you go this way. It's going to be okay if you put this on. When the Bible clearly is also giving us directions and saying, look, now that you're born again with an incorruptible seed, now that you're different, now that you're kept by the power of God, now that you have joy, unspeakable and full of glory, now that you have an inheritance incorruptible, now that you're washed and forgiven, put off these things because it doesn't make sense for you to put these on. That is not who you are. Time and time again, we'll come to church. Little kids uh, in junior church, they'll say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Can I just tell you that when you put on malice, when you put on uh, guile, when you put on evil speakings, you know what happens to that light? It goes, people can't see it. It doesn't change the fact of who you really are. No, I'm a child of God whether I have malice on or not. But it doesn't represent Christ, how, I, how I'm supposed to represent Him. The Bible says that we're ambassadors for Christ. So if I'm an ambassador, I am to represent Christ in a way that truly represents Christ. Uh, would you turn to Hebrews chapter number 12? Hebrews chapter number 12. And if you want to grab Romans 13, you could grab that too. Hebrews chapter 12. going the wrong way. Hebrews chapter number 12, and I'm going to start in reading verse number 1. It says this, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Um, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Here again, God's encouraging us to put something off. Look at Romans chapter number 13. Uh, Romans 13 and verse number 11. Romans 13 and verse number 11. It says, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and in drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying 
But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Here the Bible is encouraging us to cast off the works of darkness and put on Christ. So apparently, as a Christian, although I'm redeemed, although I'm forgiven, although Christ's righteousness is put on me, I have the ability to pick up, to put on something that is not representing who I am. Otherwise, Peter would not say to lay aside. So be aware, Christian, that we can go through life and we can pick up something that we have no business picking up, whether it be an attitude, whether it be a, a, a wrong thought. Sometimes these come to us with the friends that we keep, uh, the communications that we have, and all of a sudden, before I know it, if I'm not careful, I'm not growing in my walk with the Lord. Uh, look back at 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, and we'll keep going. Verse number 2, it says this, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Um, where there's life, there's growth. We talked about this not too long ago. I stole an outline from my dad many, many years ago when I was in college. And it was out of Acts chapter, shoot, seven or eight. One of the points in that is where there's life, there's growth. And we talked about that, where there's life, there's growth. And uh, Peter is simply saying to us, look, you guys have life. Christ came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. But as we grow in our walk with the Lord and we're casting off these things that, is, that don't represent who I am or who God is, and I start to desire the sincere milk of the word, the result of that is spiritual growth. You see, where there's life, there's growth. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Uh, baby Leah was just born. Uh, she's how old now? Nine weeks. Nine weeks old. Brand new. Did you realize that baby Leah, and just like the rest of us, when we were born, we had a sincere desire to be fed from our mother. No one had to, uh, you know, preach at Leah the second she was born that she needs to desire the milk of her mom. It's a fact that when something is born, they have a desire to feed from their mother. They have a desire to grow. And you know, as baby Leah grows and gets older and older, she's going to have a desire to get bigger. She's going to have a desire to grow. I, I can tell you every single one of my kids, down to my youngest, Oakley, who just turned five, I'm sitting in a wheelchair. They will come up to me at a certain age and they start eyeballing the top of my head like this, like, I'm almost as tall as you. Granted, to them, I'm standing up. But they would say, like, like Oakley's five years old and she just did this the other day. She's like, eyeballing me. She's like, I'm almost as bigger as you. <laughs> they have a desire to grow. You know what evidence we have of someone who's been saved, someone who's been born again? They have a desire to grow. They have a desire for the sincere milk of the word. Justin, when you got saved, no one told you, you got to be here Sunday night. You got to be here Wednesday night. If you don't come, no, there's something that happens inside of somebody when they're born again, they have a desire to grow. Look what it says in the last part of verse 3. It says, If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. See, you can see from a distance. You can hear from a distance. You can smell from a distance. But you can't taste from a distance if, unless you got a really long tongue. 
<laughs> when you get up close and personal and you have tasted of the goodness of God for yourself, there's something inside of us that wants to grow. Uh, we have a desire for the sincere milk of the word. Ephesians 4 and verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3 says that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. 2 Peter 3.18 But grow in grace. Philippians 1.9 And this I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1 we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. You see, when someone comes to Christ for their salvation, it's not just like a, a, you get saved and that's it. You'll see Christ in heaven. No, there is, a, there is life that comes into you when you get saved. When you're born again, the life of Christ comes in and he gives us the desire. He, he puts a desire in us to grow, to know him because we've tasted of his grace. We've tasted of his goodness. And for those of you who have lived in the world and you've wallowed in sin and you've had all these things on you, you've never tasted anything like it. And so you realize how awesome it is and you realize those things didn't fulfill but Christ did, and all of a sudden, you start growing, and you want to spend time in His Word so that you can get to know Him more and more and more. This is eternal life, that we might know Him in the power of His resurrection. And so, there's a desire that, that we have to grow, but something that will stifle that growth, if we're not careful, is the things that we have put on as we walk through the world. Someone ticks you off driving down 168. You're late. And you get behind like some guy that's just driving five miles an hour. And all of a sudden malice starts growing up in you. You guys realize people have been shot from road rage? Probably not up here. But uh, people have been this close, Justin's like, it's, it's been close. <laughs> We're to grow in our walk with the Lord. We have a desire to grow. Peter's encouraging them, put off those things that are stifling your growth. Do you have a desire? Do you have a desire for the word of God? Because this is how we get to know God. Do you have a desire to be around the people of God? There's something very fulfilling about that. This morning was awesome, man. As we prayed for those in our body, our brothers and sisters who are hurting, who are suffering. There's a closeness. There's a bond. There's something that we share with each other that you can't explain. Do you have a desire for that? Look at verse number uh, 12 and verse num or chapter 2, verse Number 12, it says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, uh, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So he's saying, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Do you guys realize the more junk that we put on that isn't a true uh, reflection of who we are? Sometimes we grow cold, we grow numb, 
and then we think it makes sense to put something else on that doesn't represent who Christ is. And as we grow numb, the world stops seeing our good works in order that Christ would get the glory. Uh, this last week, I was in the shop. Actually, it was yesterday. I was in the shop, and I was uh, I had this. Uh, it's a 110 slash 220 little buzz box that it's a welder, a stick welder, and the connection had come loose uh, from the stinger and the cable that comes. And so I was. Uh, I put it all together and I got it all fixed. I actually bought a longer lead for it. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna try this thing out. So I get some steel out on the table. Um, and I realized that that wasn't even the stinger for that buzz box. I'm like, this thing doesn't even fit. And so I'm like digging around for the other stinger that actually went with that buzz box. I had everything out. So I thought I'd burn a few rods anyways. And I'm welding along, I'm burning some 6010, some 7018. I'm just, and the lead comes out of the stinger of the other one that I got and it hits the table just like ah. so I've been welding with this for a while and so um, I unplug it turn the thing off unplug it I get the the stinger and I, I grab the lead and I got a screwdriver and I had to unscrew this uh, flathead screw pull it out I have gloves on I pull that out and so I could slide the plastic over, then get an Allen wrench and take the other one off. Well, I've got gloves on and I'm working with this thing and I'm unscrewing, I have the screw in my hand, but then I go to uh, take the other thing off. Well, I didn't even realize it, but I take the screw that I had just taken out with the screwdriver, it's in my hand. I didn't want it to fall on the ground, so I put it in my mouth, <laughs> like to go in between my lips. Instantly, I realized, ah, man, I still have, if you want to come look at it after church, you want to see it? Uh, it burned me right away. But I wasn't even thinking in my mind because I've been handling it the whole time with my hands and I wasn't getting burned. And I think it's a good picture of what, what it's like when we're constantly putting on a uh, gossip, evil speaking, you know, we just, we handle it. No, it's not who I am. No, it doesn't represent me. I don't have the right thoughts, but you know what? It, I don't feel the burn per se until all of a sudden God wants to open my eyes and help me realize I'm going to get burned. And if I want to grow, I have got to put these things off. Because they're not contributing to conforming me to the image of Christ, but they're actually doing the very exact opposite. Yeah. They're causing me to look like nothing of who I really am. They dull my light to where the world around me doesn't even know that I'm redeemed, that I'm forgiven that I'm born again, that I'm righteous, that I'm seated in heavenly places, that I'm all these things that are mine. So tonight, I think I'm, I just wanted to get through verse number three. If you have tasted of the goodness of God, if you've tasted of his graciousness, would you just say tonight that you have the desire to not stay where you're at. You know, we've heard time and time again, I've been listening to some leadership podcasts with just different business leaders, and they have all said, which I've heard from a pulpit many, many, many times, if you are not growing forward, you're going backwards. There's no staying still. So these are secular leaders from a business standpoint saying that if you're not growing forward, if you're not going forward in your business, you're going backwards. Spiritually speaking, you guys, the same thing is true for us spiritually. If we're not growing spiritually, and we've had all these verses that say grow, abound, uh, learn more, put this off, put this on, 
If we're not doing that, then we're going backwards. And how sad is it to receive all of Christ at salvation and then experience none of him on a day-to-day -day basis as we pile all these things on us that don't represent who we truly are. Yeah. Um, let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, God, I thank you that you love us. Thank you that you bought us, you purchased us with your, with, with your own blood. Um, you made us new. We're a new creation. We're saved. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. God, I pray that uh, as Christians that we would realize that we have the ability uh, to stifle our growth, to stunt our growth when we put these things on that, that hurt us. They burn us. It's sin. And um, it not only hinders our walk with you, but it hinders the light that the rest of the world sees. And Father, I pray that you would just... Uh, be with us right now with heads bowed and eyes closed i would just ask is there anybody tonight that you would say uh justin pray for me god spoke to my heart about different things in my life that i've allowed to put on not even realizing that it's eventually going to burn me and it's stifling my growth and you just say uh, pray for me tonight you just slip your hand right up and right back down okay there's hands on both sides and uh i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to uh, close in prayer and if you guys want to just pray silently in your seat while I'm closing and uh, do business with God Father in heaven um, I pray that you would be with those who raise their hand I pray that you would uh, help them in the area of God that you spoke to them about that you would help them to put off the things that sometimes we don't think anything of but in reality God they're they're not allowing us to grow they're not allowing us to enjoy Christ. They're not allowing us to be a light. And I pray that you would just grow us. I pray that you would uh, bless our church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. That's